There's a story inside every smoke shop, with every cigar, and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle at Bovida. This is Box Press. Thanks for having a cigar with me. Well, I have to thank you. It's yeah. a privilege. Yeah. Sharing those moments is, is priceless, I feel. It's what are you uh, inspired about today? What is uh, driving you today with your pursuits around here? You have a lot of relationships in the cigar industry, obviously, reconnecting with friends you haven't seen perhaps since last year. Absolutely. Well, I, I didn't make it to the show last year because of uh, family family situation at home. I'm, I'm taking care of my grandmother. She's 102 now. So certain things had to be done. I couldn't make it to the show, but... Uh, I was here last uh, uh, two weeks, two two, two years weeks, ago. Two yeah. years ago. That's what you call it. Um, sitting down with you guys, um, and, and and now we're back. So, it, as you said, it is all about reconnecting, seeing people again, giving everybody a big hug, and, and sharing a cigar. And are you as passionate about food as you are about oh, cigars? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, my earliest childhood memories are always around the, the family table kneading dough with my grandfather baking bread I come from a very simple and poor background so we never had much but we had the family table and you tell people where that where you're from Austria I was born and raised in Vienna I always say I'm a classical Viennese mixture a little bit of everything that the former Habsburg monarchy Austro-Hungarian Empire had to offer so my name is Slovenian, but uh, I had uh, mixed influences and uh, different parts of the family. But true Viennese, born, born and raised. I spent most of my life there, uh, apart from uh, a time I spent in London. I lived and lived and worked there. Always enjoyed London, considering my second home. And uh, I was working in the hospitality industry there. So I was a bartender at the American Bar at the Savoy. I worked for a consultancy company and co-opened a gin craft distillery right in the city of London. So in fact, the finer things in life, food, good drinks, that's always been uh, an integral part of my life and, and, and what I enjoy the most. I have to say though, people in the wine and spirits industry and in the food industry, they are passionate, but I have never experienced anything like the premium cigar industry when it comes to how people come together, how you connect through a humble cigar, mm. the conversation that you're having, it's, it's unique. And that, that's utterly I fascinating. Why, I wonder why that is. Um, I just one idea of why that might be the case is it, it, it causes you to slow down, causes you to be present. It's very hard to enjoy a cigar if you're not fully engaged in the Very experience true. of enjoying the cigar it's not something you do rushed whilst yeah, you're and, and running you from a to b you don't do it passively i mean Absolutely. it's not i mean you may listen to music you may enjoy a meal you know uh, we had we had uh, opportunity to eat a few meals together with the team and and the complaint among the group is most of the places you eat in Las Vegas you can't enjoy a cigar With. while eating yeah. so but in a lot a lot of the times previously we've been here we'd, we'd go to Ferraro's or we'd sit out on the patio and eat this sumptuous Italian dinner and while we're eating in during the courses we're enjoying, we had cigars going during the meal. Is that yeah. a European thing or is that a... I think it very much is. The only downside would be that in a lot of European countries, given the, the, the regulatory framework, um, you don't have that opportunity anymore and you don't get the, the privilege and pleasure of enjoying a good meal with a cigar. In certain countries it's still possible, but in Austria, for example, you, you wouldn't have that opportunity because smoking is mostly forbidden indoors in public places. So that, that, that's a bit of a challenge and a hurdle, but there's something very, very special about that moment when you, when you share a meal with somebody, you're, you're breaking bread together and you share a cigar. Well, and it, typically a European, in my opinion, would be inclined to have a more long course of dinner. 
than an American. We're a lot of times obsessed with getting back to whatever we were doing or there, there isn't the time taken and the, the time hustle taken. and bustle yeah. work always being busy yeah it's true I, I see more and more of that internationally though as well and I think in the time that we live in everything is fast paced everything is digital everything is online you're constantly available and I, I very much love the what you mentioned earlier and, and, and the topic that you brought up about time to me a cigar is time and it is also the perfect product for our current time because more than ever it's so relevant to slow down focus on being present in the moment and to just enjoy a great conversation appreciate the moment for what it is and that could also be just a moment for yourself when you when you sit down with a cigar and you contemplate you think about life about the day you had the conversations you shared or reading a great book so whether it's time for yourself or time shared with somebody else the cigar is kind of always like the, the facilitator that makes the entire experience unique I find so in your creative journey and the things that you've worked on in your career, you're known as a creative, uh, an inspirational creator. I mean, that's kind of the reputation that you have, at least in what I've read about you and what I've heard about you. Um, I'm just, I'm curious where your work life with are you, are you engaged fully in Marifel so day in, day out? Being the vice president for Marifel Cigar, that is what I, I focus on, what I spend my, my time, my energy on, and uh, where I'm delighted and humbled to, to attribute and dedicate my, my time and resources and, and my passion. I, I had an interesting path in life and, and, and career thus far. I'm still a, a young gentleman with 35 years of age, but um, I had the privilege of exploring different industries and different fields of expertise. But as I told you before, it, it always kind of evolved around the inspiration that I have from my family and growing up in a, in a humble environment where the meal was important, the family table was important, a good conversation was important. And it always stayed with me. I then ventured into a few other things. I mean, I, I studied socioeconomics. I, I worked with handicapped pupils. I was a skiing instructor. I almost became a professional musician. I'm a drummer and a singer. Uh, but I eventually reconnected with the things that inspired me most as a, as a, as an earl, as a young child. And that's always been those simple, honest, handcrafted products. Like a, a great piece of bread, a wonderful wine, or a handmade premium cigar. Mm. And so at some point I understood that this is truly what I would love to do with the time that, that I'm giving, that I'm presented with, is to share experiences with other people that are somewhat memorable and, and meaningful to them. And doing that through an analog product, something that is real and tangible, that you can smell and that you can taste, for me is the most impactful and, and direct way to do that. Because it, it hits you right away, it does something to you. Especially our senses of smell and taste I mean, all, all, all our sensory system, it's, it's so interconnected. Everything is intertwined, but our senses of smell and taste are so relevant in the day-to-day day -day life and, and how we perceive the world, how we think about life. Also, on an, on an emotional level, it has to do with how our brain sort of W takes in and works in all these sensory triggers that we get but it immediately links with our, our memory with our emotions to, 
give you a, a simple example. Everybody has a certain scent, a certain memory of your grandmother's dish when you open the door coming home from school or after a long Definitely. day of work and there's that one meal that puts you in in a place of tranquility and peace and comfort where you know I'm home. No, I'm, I'm experiencing it right now as you're talking about it. I'm just paging through memories that I have. And, and isn't it fascinating how you can recall those memories and I, I have a taste on my tongue, I have a scent in my nose from the potato bread that my grandfather used to bake and, and and that always reminds me of how important it is to appreciate those things and to be more connected with our senses with our perception of the world well and you could have stopped the sentence with to be just with to be more connected yeah and uh, I was thinking I had a conversation with a one of the one of the uh, gentleman that runs a luxury cigar club and we were talking about the luxury experience and how there's almost an exhibitionist approach to luxury consumption in at least in American society and with all the social media and, and going back to the simplicity of when you talk about the bread when you talk about the the smell at the door when you walk in that connects you to a memory that yeah. connects you to yourself it's a uh, conscious living and the ability of luxury experiences to impact conscious living as opposed to being just strictly looked upon as a hedonistic escape you know it's a is it not to be judgmental about hedonistic escapes but it's like there's so much more absolutely about being present in the moment and it's absolutely. really getting rather deep but I'm rather enjoying it and you know that's why we, we said Mariful Cigar, we call it the Uber Luxury. I mean, this cigar has created the segment of Uber Luxury in the cigar world. And by that, we're not talking about the price point. We're, we're talking about the hedonistic experience. We're talking about analog. We're talking about time. And we're talking about preserving certain values and traditions that have been important in the past. And we probably somehow forgot some of those things in these very hectic environments and in the world that we live in. And that's also, and coming back to what we were discussing about my, my previous work experiences, that's where I immediately understood and realized that the Merrill family has a unique legacy and history with 400 years and 11 generations. And this project is it's a legacy project. It's, it's, it's a means to share values and history with people through an actual cigar. And that was why I immediately connected with this idea and with the concept. Besides the fact that I share a European heritage and an upbringing like the Mariful family so there's there's certain things that we, we, we have in common and that we we clicked initially and immediately and and that's why I'm I'm blessed and grateful to to dedicate my time and resources to this who smokes that cigar that's a very interesting question and without being judgmental or you know stressing any preconceived notions uh, we always wanted Mariful Cigar to be affordable and available for pretty much anybody yes this is a luxury cigar a noble luxury cigar with a certain price point to it but everybody should have the opportunity to enjoy a Mariful Cigar at least once and depending on where you are, availability, a certain disposable income, that might be once a month, once a year, or once, or in, once a in a lifetime. Yeah. But I think this is a product for people who treasure those values that we discussed, people who want to take the time to, to reflect on 
what was important, what has been important, what is and will be important for a long time. And certainly people who appreciate finer things in life, right? No question about that. But I've seen men and women all around the world lighting up one of these cigars and I can tell you every single one of them took a moment, looked at the cigar, smelt it's a beautiful the, the ethereal cigar. sense and had that taste sensation lingering on the palate. And there's always something happening. I, I, I see it in the eyes. I, I see it when it's kind of like that mm. moment where you, you stop for a moment. Mm. And you realize that something very special is happening. And I have that with cigars in general, where I feel very much connected with all the people who invested so much time and energy into crafting and creating this. But even more so when you reflect upon a family history and a legacy of 11 generations who have been so heavily involved with trading tobaccos all around the world and shaping the industry in one way or another even though mostly behind the scenes because the name Maropfal to many people who enjoy tobacco and cigars might still be rather unknown though the family has been around for such a long time and so that's what what's so fascinating for me when you when you see something clicks something happens with the people where they they connect with themselves but also with something that's that's bigger than themselves and, and has meaning everybody has a first experience with a cigar um, they're all they're varied and a, a father sharing something with a son a, a buddy you know my my recollection of cigars uh, was playing garage poker and smoking really cheap store-bought, you know, like uh, convenience store-bought cigars, like a Swisher or a White Owl or whatever, back in high school, late high school, early college. Um, today, I take a lot of pleasure from giving cigars to people. Oh, yeah. Finding someone that maybe I met at the store that I had visit with regularity and they were smoking a uh, perhaps a infused cigar because that's how they got introduced and then introducing them to a, a Connecticut or a Maduro or a Habano wrapper that I like that's approachable and not gonna put a dent in their forehead that they're gonna have a decent experience with to take it to the next level what's your experience been with introducing people to cigars or is that part of your focus as you look at your Mirafella experience in terms of how to, enga how, do you, how to engage people? I think there's different aspects to how to best answer that question. One is I love introducing people to cigars when they probably haven't had that experience before and to give them the opportunity to, to explore and experience the unique magic of a conversation and a cigar shared with great people I wouldn't necessarily present somebody with a Mariful cigar as their first cigar ever but that's the other aspect if you meet somebody who is a, a seasoned cigar aficionado and I have the privilege of presenting them with a Mariful cigar that to me is a a very very special moment I mean you you saw that it it, it makes me humble and it, I I'm very respectful in the way I treat mm -hmm. these cigars because even for me it's a rare treat to enjoy Downright one of these reverent. but to have the opportunity to present somebody a friend a fellow or even a stranger with a Mariful cigar to me is a is a magical moment so it's it's both the ability to introduce new people to the world of cigars or to introduce people who already had who had tipped their toe into into the waters of premium cigar and then introduce them to a Mariful cigar are equally special and, and beautiful 
Do you remember your first one? My first Mariful cigar? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. As it were yesterday. It was together with the uh, Jeremiah Mariful. We were in Belgium at a beautiful castle called Chateau de Mox. And we we broke open a box of Mariful cigar. We visited a very good friend of the family. And we, at the same time, had the opportunity to shoot some photo and video content for Mariful Cigar. And it was the first time that I sat down with Jeremiah. He presented me with a Mariful Cigar. In fact, it was a Meijer Pyramid, the same cigar that I'm smoking right now. And it was like the world stopped. I didn't think about time and, and place anymore and I just had that very moment uh, shared with Jeremiah and to, to explore and experience the cigar for the first time. It sounds like a fabulous setting for that introduction. Absolutely. I couldn't have thought about a better place with that gorgeous environment surrounded by lovely people and then getting to share one of these. So did the friendship precious. precede the engagement with the company? Was there oh, absolutely. for a length of time? Absolutely, yes. Otherwise, I I couldn't be in that place and I, I wouldn't want to to work on a project if it's if I don't feel like it's it has a special meaning or I belong and you know I've been self employed for for 10 years running my own company and to to take the time and the effort and the passion to invest myself into a product, project it means a lot to me and I couldn't do it for any other you know random project and product it took me a while to realize in life what's what's really important is to love what you do and to enjoy every single day not even going to work you know for me the, the whole concept of, of, of work-life balance doesn't exist because there's meaning in what I get to do for a living and I consider it an integral part of my life we all spend most of our time working mm -hmm. so I never wanted it to feel like work so I have to love and enjoy it and besides having an entrepreneurial spirit and, and mindset for me whichever project I work on whichever product I get to work with I give it my all and I would always treat it not only with respect but as if it were my own and that was crucial in the way the the relationship and the friendship evolved with Jeremiah and then afterwards with with the whole Mariful family and with our family team where it's an integral part of the way we come together we work together and what we then get to share with the outside world you look at statistics and data that's produced in surveys and the vast majority of people aren't in love with what they do what a gift that's why I said I I would hope to I would I would love that that's the case and I hope that could serve as an inspiration to other people as well to have the, the, the courage to reconsider what it is they're passionate about in life and and what they get to do on a daily basis at the end of the day what do we want to be remembered for or what do we want to think about and remember ourselves when eventually things come to an end or we go on to the next part of our journey right i would hope that we can say with with gratitude and, and with joy that we had the opportunity to do something with our lives that that is meaningful and that means something to ourselves and to other people and that hopefully we got to to share moments and experience with other people that are worth remembering and you know you always say lead by example right and I I wouldn't dare saying that we get to 
influence other people in, in what they want to do with their life or where, where they're supposed to end up work-wise. But I hope that it can be a role model where other people also think about what do we do with the time that we're given and that, that we're presented with and make it memorable. I'm very relaxed all of a sudden. I've gone from who's going to be on the schedule today and how many people are we going to be able to connect with. And I'm just in a sort of a place in the day where I'm just, I feel really relaxed. I want to thank you for that uh, I have to experience and conversation. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lovely experience. I wouldn't dare saying like you're in a bubble, right? But it feels like you become somewhat disconnected from what's happening around, from yeah. all the hustle and bustle, and you know, time and place aren't that relevant anymore because you you get to share and enjoy something and experience, and that's what cigars, what what great cigars can do, and what great conversation does. T talk about light them up. Talk about your uh, your interviewing world. I think it comes back to what we were discussing before. The whole idea of Light'em Up from day one has been to, to build bridges, bring people together and provide a safe space and environment where people can, can meet and enjoy a great conversation. Ever since day one, Light'em Up has been about the love and respect for the premium cigar industry, the people therein, and how we can share those stories with the outside world. Whether it's cigar enthusiasts or people who never enjoyed and, and smoked a premium cigar, we have people joining from all over the world, all walks of life, and everything from a seasoned cigar enthusiast and passionado, a once every now and then kind of smoker to people who never enjoyed a premium cigar but they love the conversation and not once but many times I had people coming up to me or sending an email a text message or a DM on social media that they don't smoke cigars they have never tried one in their life but they love joining because they're fascinated by the conversations mm -hmm and the stories of these people, what inspired them, what influenced them, and what ultimately brought them to the dance and, and to the industry. And that to me is a true testament of what we discussed earlier, the ability of, of a premium cigar to bring people together and to give us an opportunity to share a moment and, and, and share certain stories. And so that has always been the, the nucleus and the, and the core of Light'em Up, and still to this day it is. And on a, on a weekly basis, every Wednesday, we get to open our virtual lounge via Zoom to the people who come and join us. We have normally a guest, a star guest, an icon from the cigar industry to lead the conversation and to, to, to share the interview with me. And then we have people joining from all around the world directly via zoom at the lounge or through the live stream that we put online and become immersed in that experience and become part of it so it's not like a, a static format where you just sit and watch or you listen to a podcast but you can truly become part of the experience and that to me is very important it's a different way of engaging with the conversation and not to just passively listen but to truly be a part of it I've uh, enjoyed the occasion to interview people and have conversations uh, that we've captured on video for our podcasts and different different uh, events that we've participated in. And what I've loved so much about it is it's a very parallel reflection of what Bovid is about as a company. We're an asterisk on this entire industry. We're um, we're not the star of the show. We're a supporting actor. Um, we're committed to helping our customers enjoy their passions, maximize their passions. And um, there's something, it's just a privilege to get 
with people and give them space to tell their story or share the notion that they're fascinated with in the moment. Um, it's, it's, it's a real reflection of what this endeavor has been for me. That's what it's, I do. It's, it's I introduce people to basically to freshness and to maintaining quality of things that we love. It's a, it's a beautiful analogy that you brought up and I never thought of it that way in, in regards to, to Bovida, but it is entirely what I have experienced through Light Em Up and through my journalistic work in general. It takes, I don't know if, if humility is the right word, but the realization that it's not about you. It's about providing an opportunity in the platform for other people to share their story, to express themselves, and for the viewer, the listener, the participants to to engage and, and become part of that story. Yeah, it's you have to take a step back. It's interest. It's People have interest in something for a variety of motivations. So I can be interested because of something you're going to give me. I'm going to get paid because I sold you something, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or you can be interested for the s- sake of being interested. To and genuinely funnily enough, I think everything else then is a is a natural progression or is a natural result of that. I never believed in sales or being salesy for the sake of I'm trying to talk you into this is the the best thing ever since sliced bread. If we genuinely get together, share a story and share the interest with the other person so that I get to know you and learn what you are all about, what the company or the product that you work for and with is all about, everything else will follow. And so I think you you hit the nail on the head and you, you, you phrased it perfectly. It's the genuine interest for the other person and then we come together and suddenly one plus one equals is, is way more than two. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a cigar for every moment and, and every occasion and that, that that could be different things, you right. know? Similar to aromas and flavors being different for everybody based on your sensory experiences and the the database of aromaticity and tastes that you have built for yourself, the references that you that you have for certain triggers that that, that hit your, your sensory system, right? So I don't necessarily like to talk all too much about the cigar tastes like XYZ because it might it might be different for everybody. Yeah, and, go and who am I to tell you that you know this has a, a note of frankincense in it, right? It might be different for you, but we can talk about it and there again the cigar becomes a door opener to a great conversation and a whole a whole journey beyond that Reinhardt I want to thank you for the conversation thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure it was a treat I hope we get to do it again I look forward to that thank you very much yeah